Who are the four greatest players in Bearcats football history? What about the four greatest games? And what about the four greatest moments? Well, I'm going to unveil all of those lists today here on Mount Rushmore Monday. You're in Locked On Bearcats. Our Locked On Bearcats, your daily podcast on the Cincinnati Bearcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for making Locked On Bearcats your first listen every day. It's free and available everywhere you get your podcast. Don't forget, if you're watching on the Locked On Bearcats YouTube channel to subscribe, we are so close to 100 subscribers. And you can also like this video or any other video on our YouTube channel. And you can also share a comment on the video. If you're downloading from an audio platform, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast, don't forget to subscribe there too. You can also share a comment and or give it a rating. All of that on audio and YouTube helps more Bearcats fans like you find this podcast. Alex Frank here with you, former sports director of UC's Bearcats Media, student-run media organization, commentated football and men's basketball games, and hosted a weekly radio show in the Jack and Jones Strader radio studio, and bringing all of that experience here to the Locked On Bearcats podcast. So today, it's Mount Rushmore Monday. I'm going to unveil the four greatest in Bearcats football players, games, and moments. So this segment will be players. Segment two will be games. Segment three will be moments. This is an off-season topic that we're going to do for at least today and next Monday when we go to men's basketball. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. The four greatest players in Bearcats football history. Let's get straight to it. Number four. Sauce Gardner. You can't not have a list of the four greatest players in Bearcats football history without Sauce Gardner. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is you can't have a list and Sauce Gardner not be on there. He was so good and so dominant and so program changing that he has to be on the list. But it doesn't necessarily mean that he's number one just because he had the most dominant career of any Bearcats player in the history of the program. Sauce Gardner flipped the script and burst onto the scene in 2019. Flipped the script of the program. Sauce Gardner changed the perception, the standing, the hierarchy of the program with his pick six against Central Florida in 2019. From that point on, Cincinnati has only lost two conference games to the same opponent. One of those games was without Desmond Ritter. Both games were very close. But ever since that that night against Central Florida, the Bearcats trailed 16-13 to 13 late in the third quarter. And Sauce Gardner with a pick six, about 20 yards, against Central Florida. The Bearcats took the lead, never let it go, went on to win that game, and have been to three straight conference championships. They have won two straight conference championships, and there's a very strong chance that they can win a third straight conference championship, which would also mean they go to their fourth straight championship game. Not a lot of other programs around the country can say that. And ever since Sauce Gardner's pick six, before that, UCF ruled this conference with an iron fist. Even as good as Cincinnati was in 2018, they lost to them by 25. Well, since that night, they've only lost two conference games. They have beaten UCF two straight times since then on the road in 2020. And that UCF team was still really good. And then this year at home, they trounced them by 35. Or was it 34? No, it was 35, I'm pretty sure. 56 to 21. That play has kept the program at the top of the conference since that night. That night was about changing the guard, pole positioning. And Sauce Gardner made the play. And not only that, he was a freshman All-American. Maybe some thought it was a fluke. He only got better and more dominant. No touchdowns throughout his career. Was an All-American consensus first-team All-American last uh, this past season. And went on to be the highest draft pick in Bearcats football history. First first-round pick since 1971. 
and number four overall to the New York Jets, where I believe he is going to be a really, really good cornerback. Number three, Marty Gilliard. Marty Gilliard, the number of highlight reel plays that he had throughout his career was or were incredible. And not only that, he was a threat to break one loose any moment in the game. His kickoff return against Pitt in the 2009 Big East Championship game turned the entire game around. In three seasons of Cincinnati, which was highlighted by his junior and senior seasons, in both those seasons he had over 80 receptions, over 1,100 receiving yards, and 11 touchdowns in both those seasons. And then if you go to his kick and punt returns, his junior season, he had 36 kickoff returns and two touchdowns averaged over 27 and a half yards per return. And then his next season averaged 30 and a half yards per return, two touchdowns, and he added a punt return touchdown in 2009. So needless to say, Marty Gilliard was an explosive playmaker, probably the most explosive flow, explosive playmaker that this program has ever had. And he was a fan favorite. And I think that's why he was an emotional heartbeat to the team. He walked out when Brian Kelly announced he was going to Notre Dame at the team banquet. That's just because he put his heart and soul into the program. And the Bearcats fans and team pay dividends because of it. Number two, Tony Pike. And this is personal for me. He is a former colleague of mine. Worked with him at iHeartMedia, produced for him several times on ESPN 1530, Cincy 360, and the Tony and Mo football show. Got to do that once. It was a really fun show. Still is, of course. Tony Pike put the program on the map. Tony Pike was the first Cincinnati kid to play for the Bearcats. First great Cincinnati kid. Come, came from Reading High School. And in three seasons with the team, he was absolutely spectacular. Highlighted, of course, by his senior season where, I mean, you had Bearcat fans clamoring for him to be in the Heisman race. He, of course, had a lot of memorable games. The Pike to Bins game, which he overcame three interceptions in that game and ultimately made perhaps the biggest throw in the history of Bearcats football. Sophomore season only played in five games. Junior season played in 12 games, had 19 touchdowns to 11 interceptions, completed 61.4% of his passes. And then his senior season in 10 games completed 62.4% of his passes, 29 touchdowns, six interceptions in his Bearcats career. Only threw for 2,520 yards, and yet that offense was still incredibly, incredibly explosive. Tony Pike, of course, since has become an ambassador for the university. He was a commentator on the Bearcats broadcast crew. He is in the Hall of Fame with that entire 2009 team, including Marty Gilliard. And he is now a prominent sports talk show host in the Cincinnati area on Cincy 360 and the Tony, excuse me, a Mo football show. You will also hear him occasionally on 700 WLW hosting sports talk if he feels in for Lance McAllister. But the number one player in program history, in my opinion, and this is recency bias, I know, Desmond Ritter. When you talk about what he did for the program, Tony Pike put it on the map. Desmond Ritter took the program to uncharted territory. 10-plus wins in three or four seasons would have been four straight had it not been for a shortened COVID-19 season in 2020. He led the Bearcats to national prominence, particularly in his last two seasons. He related to the fans in the community. He grew up right before our eyes. He related so well to the student section, the entire community of Clifton. He was brash. He was athletic. He was program changing. He evolved so much from year one to year four. It felt like we were on the journey with him. It felt like he was there for so long. He was there throughout our entire college careers. I know, by the way, the numbers showed. All-time leader in passing yards. All-time leader in so many other school and conference categories, the American Athletic Conference. That's Desmond Ritter's legacy. Not only is he the greatest quarterback to ever play for Bearcats football, but he's one of the greatest quarterbacks in the he's probably the greatest quarterback in the history of the American Athletic Conference and when the Bearcats leave that is going to be his legacy and his standing. Up next, the games. Man, so many classics even before the Luke Fickle era. But which games will make my list? Find out after a word from Bill Bar. You see, imagine this. 
So imagine dipping your finger into that plastic tub of birthday cake frosting. Shout out to a woman who is my second mother, Osla Meekin in Boulder, Colorado. Happy birthday to you. So imagine you're dipping your finger into that plastic tub of birthday cake frosting. And then you open your eyes and you realize that was only 150 calories and 16 grams of protein. That's what it feels like to eat a birthday cake puff from Built Bar. I just ordered mine. I have never tasted anything like this before. They're available right now, and we can't promise, though, that they will be here tomorrow. So get them today at Built.com. Make every day your birthday with Built's birthday cake puffs. Built has taken the delicious experience of biting into a fresh slice of birthday cake. Now, it's my birthday, which is not till November 12th. I'm getting myself some German chocolate cake. Maybe Built Bar will make one of those. Because if they do, oh, I might order a lifetime supply. See, these puffs are enrobed in 100% white chocolate and added sprinkles. Now, you might wonder, how the heck is that only 150 calories? That's too good to be true. That's like buying a new car with all the new features for free. Well, Built Bars are, in fact, only 150 calories, and they have 16 grams of protein. So if you're looking for a healthy way to get flavor and variety in your day, all Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means with Built, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it. And they're made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. And no, I am not a doctor, but that says it here. Go to Built.com to get birthday cake puffs now with promo code LOCK15. You'll get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Make sure to go check out Locked On NBA Big Board. Host Rafael Barlow from NBA Draft Junkies and author of the NBA Big Board newsletter is joined by Richard Stamen, Sam Ferris, and Leif Thulin, giving fans an in-depth look into the NBA Draft mock draft player rankings. And, of course, Big Boards, it's free and available everywhere you get your podcasts. Alex Frank here with you on Locked On Bearcats, Monday, May 16th, 2022. The NBA Draft Lottery is tomorrow night preceding game one of the Eastern Conference Finals between the Boston Celtics and the Miami Heat. I am telling you right now, that is going to be a phenomenal series. I can't wait. I, it's good. It's going seven games. And if it doesn't go seven games, it's going to be the best six-game series you'll ever see. But I do believe it's going to go seven, and I do believe the Celtics can upset Miami. They're battle-tested now, and I think I still think the Celtics are the best team in the Eastern Conference. At the time of this recording... Didn't know who uh, won Game 7 between Dallas and Phoenix because that was going on at the time of this recording. But the winner will meet Golden State in the Western Conference Finals starting on Wednesday night in either Phoenix or San Francisco. Anyway, back to the topic of today's show. Mount Rushmore Monday, the four greatest Bearcats football players, games, and moments were on the games category. This one was fun. I came up with, let's see, so I had to, I had to ultimately whittle it down to four. But I came up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 games as candidates. So here we go. The four greatest games in the history of Bearcats football. We start with number four. I'm going to go Bearcats and Notre Dame. Signature win in program history. It put, And I think the thing that stands out to me is that it put away any sourness that was still there from 2009. The program was in great hands going into that game. Hell, they were ranked higher than Notre Dame, and they were favored to win that game. But there was still some animosity towards Brian Kelly and towards Notre Dame from Bearcat Nation. And you saw the number of fans who made the trip from Notre Dame. You would have thought they had that trip planned since the game was announced in late April of 2019. I remember being, oh my God, I wish I had one more year in college so I could commentate that game. Well... Thankfully, um, Sean McMahon, good friend of mine, my successor at Bearcast Media, was gracious enough to uh, include me in their broadcast of that game. Got to host pregame halftime and postgame with them. and Or I should say be a part of their pregame halftime and postgame coverage. And just being in the stadium that day. First off, Notre Dame Stadium, an unbelievable place to watch a college football game. Unbelievable place to watch a college football game. The history, the, the, the backdrop, the atmosphere it's all incredible the number of Bearcats fans who were there it felt like a coronation it felt like a a transition into a new era of Bearcats football that was something special and remember how I said in, in the first segment Desmond Ritter took the program to uncharted territory a true road win at Notre Dame 
a place where the Irish had not lost since 2017. That's what that game felt like. And to be in the stadium that day and to witness a history-making win for a program that 30 years ago was, you know, on it was endangered, you know, they were on the verge of going extinct. That's what it felt like to be in the stadium that day. This ushering this new era of Bearcats football. It felt like we belonged in the upper echelon of the sport. That's what it felt like. And we already had the Big 12 birth Big 12 birth uh, with us as well. Let's go to number three. The 2012 Belk Bowl. Bearcats and Duke, it produced an iconic moment from one of the most highly coveted players in Bearcats football history in Travis Kelsey. Back and forth game until, oh, now I'm going to blank on who the quarterback was. Don't fail me now. Memory, um, it's not Gunner. No, obviously it wasn't Gunner Keel. Um, shoot, now I'm going to have to wonder who that um, quarterback was. Anyway. You know who the receiver was who caught the touchdown. Travis Kelsey, 81 yards to win the game for the Bearcats or put them ahead, but the Bearcats ultimately needed another score, which they did get to win the game 48-34. to The quarterback in that game was Brendan K. That's who it was, Brendan K. And the Bearcats ultimately had the 83-yard touchdown reception by Travis Kelsey, and then a Nick Temple 55-yard interception return with 14 seconds left, or rather, as time, no, as with 14 seconds left to win the game for Cincinnati. Now, the Bearcats trailed 16-3 in that game, went up 27-16, Duke goes up 31-27, Bearcats go back in front on a Chris Moore touchdown, Duke ties the game on a 52-yard field goal, and then the Bearcats go ahead late, Travis Kelsey touchdown, and then the interception to seal the game. The Bearcats had 18 fewer first downs in that game in 7 minutes and 24 seconds, fewer time or less time of possession, and had um, 6 fewer yards than Duke. Duke actually ran 36 more plays in that game, and yet Cincinnati still managed to pull out the win, one of these signature bowl wins, and the last game, that Butch Jones coached as head coach of the Bearcats, number three on the list. Number two, let's go back to week 12, 2006. The upset win over number seven, Rutgers. That win, to me, got people invested in this program. Because if you remember that time, everybody was all over the Bengals. They had just won the AFC North the previous year. Bearcats football was kind of average. You know, they weren't really good yet. Mark D'Antonio was building something good, and that was his signature win. It made people care about the program. It got recruits like Tony Pike, the Selleck brothers, the Kelseys. It got people invested into the college program in Cincinnati. It showed that they were there to compete in the Big East, which they went on to win the next three years. And here's what's interesting to me about that game. So that same day was Michigan-Ohio State when Michigan was two, Ohio State was one. And that game was dubbed, and that game was maybe the game of, I don't think it was dubbed the game of the century, but it was a big time game and probably the biggest game in the history of that rivalry. So a game that was just 100 miles up the road, I-71, completely dwarfed, dwarfed that game on ESPN that night. It's on ESPN or ABC. Might have been on ABC. In fact, now I think it was because the game between Michigan and Ohio State was on ABC. So then, of course, they put the Bearcats Rutgers game on after that. So everybody was still riding the high of Michigan, Ohio State, and how great that game was. It turned out to be a really good game. But then they saw Cincinnati upset Rutgers and the fans storming the field. And it wasn't it wasn't like the Bearcats pulled off a last second win. They kicked Rutgers' ass from start to finish. I mean, they thoroughly dominated them. And that Rutgers team was pretty dang good. They had Ray Rice as their running back, and that Bearcats team. Didn't have as it didn't have a lot of star-studded players like they would the next few years. But that win got people to care about the program. It got people to come to Nippert Stadium. It put the Bearcats on the map in the Big East. They eventually went on to go to the Papa John's Bowl in 2007. Then they went to back-to-back BCS Bowl games in 2008-2009. 
You could argue that that win was the springboard, brought Brian Kelly in, and look at what he did. He got people to completely buy into that program. Players, coaches, fans, alumni, you name it. Number one, though, Pike to Bins. How can it not be? It's the most iconic moment in program history. Is that the number one moment, though, on my list? Classic game. It was back. It was a game where Cincinnati was the better team. Pitt was number 15. If you ever get a chance to read Justin Williams's, um, how, how would you call it? It was, it was a, a snapshot over. No, no, not a snapshot. It was an overview of Pike to Vince. I'm going to call it an overview. Basically, what he did was he oral history. That's what it is. Oral history. In oral history of the game, the number of people he talked to, and I remember one quote in particular, he talked to Dan Horde and put this in his article. This was written back in 2009, the 10 year anniversary of Pike Tibbins. And he talked to Dan Horde and he said, Dan said, if the Bearcats won, they were going to go to a BCS bowl game, maybe the national championship. If they did not win that game, they were going to go to the Meineke Car Care Bowl. If you ask what bowl game that was, I am right there with you. So you had that. But think about the game. The Bearcats are down 31 to 10. 31 to 10. Tony Pike threw three interceptions in that game. And yet, they still won the game. And think about how that game ended. Pitt scores a touchdown. They missed the extra point. First off, it was snowing. The weather was brutal. Typical Pittsburgh December weather. But you had 60,000 fans. You had so many Bearcats fans there. And if you and of course, when that moment is is etched onto a bobblehead, you know it's it, it's it's part of the greatest game in Bearcats football history. It got them to the top. I I remember where I was vividly that day. Classic game. It's city rivalries. We know the rivalry between Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, two very similar cities in size and middle class. And I mean, there's other characteristics I can throw in there. It's two pa- cities that were incredibly passionate about their sports teams, and there was so much on the line. And surrounding the Bearcats going into that game. Could they go to a BCS bowl game again? Could they maybe play for a national championship? Where was Brian Kelly going to go in the days, weeks after that game? And they went in there and took care of business 45 to 44. And you think about the final drive of the game. Four plays. It took Tony Pike and the Bearcats to go down the field. Just four plays. That's it. An iconic game. The greatest game in the history of Bearcats football. Given the... The game itself, the rivalry with Pitt, the River City rivalry, so much was on the line. The, so much was at stake, and so much was surrounding the team going into that game. That was the culmination of building the program first time around. Now, when we get to one, the four greatest moments, the second culmination of building the program is featured on that list. But where? Well, I'll tell you next coming up, but first I got to tell you about Bet Online. You see, Bet Online remains our number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. It's betonline.net. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting, wagering information from live betting to the playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action bet online where the game starts. By the way, um, Hunter Green <laughs> yesterday threw a no-hitter, and the Reds still lost. I, I mean, that's only the sixth time that a pitcher throws a no-hitter of into the eighth inning of a game. Or a team no hits another team of at least eight innings. And they still lose the game. I mean, how does that happen? You no hit a team and you still win? Talk about the epitome of snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. Anyway, Alex Frank here with you. Locked on Bearcats on a Monday, May 16th, 2022. Tomorrow, bold prediction Tuesday returns. We're going to go to the quarterbacks. Ben Bryant, Evan Prater. Brady Richards, Brady Richardson, Richardson, uh, or no, I'm sorry, Luther Richardson, Brady Lichtenberg. We're going to get into all that on Lockdown Bearcats. So anyway, now, the four greatest moments. What are the four greatest moments in the history of Bearcats football? 
And there's a lot to choose from here, but I've got four. Let's start with number four. We all remember Pike to Bins in the last game of the season. But what about the play that saved the season? Well, for that, you got to go back to midway through the season, mid-October in Tampa, Florida. Tony Pikes injured out of the game. Zach Kolaris, 75-yard touchdown scamper, flipped the script against the, the Bulls in that game. And by the way, that USF team was ranked in that game. That USF team was ranked. And Cincinnati, once that run happened, the Bearcats went on to dominate the rest of the game, saved the season, kept alive the undefeated season. And that's just, you know, when your name's called and you got to go in, you got to, you know, second in command, you got to come in for, you know, your injured teammate. He made a play. One of the, one of the most overlooked, forgotten plays in the history of Bearcats football. Zach Kolaris, 75-yard touchdown run. Number three, Sauce Gardner pick six. I kind of mentioned it off the top in segment th- in segment one, but that play completely changed the program. Perception, standing, hierarchy. Whenever the Bearcats played in the big game, you knew you had Sauce Gardner in your corner. In case in point, he had an interception against Notre Dame early. That arguably saved the Bearcats in that game against the Irish. If Notre Dame goes in for an opening drive touchdown, that game might turn out like Ohio State in 2019. But instead, Sauce Gardner flipped the script in that game and he just like he did against UCF in 2019. I could go on about how great of a play that was. He jumped the route, and as soon as he clutched the ball, two hands on the ball, he was into the end zone. Sixth on the depth chart. You didn't even know who his name was. I had to look down at my spotty board and say, okay, that's Ahmad Gardner. Okay, well, he's a freshman from Detroit. Actually, my my color analyst that game, Zach Freeze, had to point that out. He was doing play by play on that play. I was color anal- I was color analyst for that quarter. Just a truly magical, memorable night. A changing of the guard. Sauce Gardner's pick six. Number the N- Nippert Stadium, the field after this year's AAC championship. That felt like a movie. And Lance McAllister said it best on Twitter. It felt like a movie. It felt like a culmination of just building and building and building, of winning marquee games, of scheduling, and all the years of hard work and loyalty from the fan base, from the ruckus, getting to the college football playoff. You know, all those times we, we went to Nippert Stadium when it lo- when no one else did. And all those times we went there and all those big games and just continued to show up and watch this team, you know, we were such big fans, but we knew there wasn't much to play for as far as a college football playoff worth going into 2019, maybe even 2020, you know, getting through the COVID season and then ultimately winning in front of a sold out crowd at Nippert Stadium, how loud it was that game. I remember where I was that game. I was on the field as a parabola camera holder. That was a an unbelievable moment. I remember as soon as the clock ran down, everybody started jumping over the rails, jumping over the ledge the wall to get down onto the field. I remember I looked over my shoulder when I walked back up to the top to go back to the production truck for ESPN ABC. When I saw that field, you you could not see grass. That's how many fans were on the field. I watched the trophy presentation. I know I was supposed to be a neutral uh, worker that day, but I allowed myself five minutes to take that in to see what that was like. All the fans on the field just celebrating a truly magical moment and they knew it meant we were going the university of cincinnati was going to the college football playoff you wanted to savor every second of it if you were a senior you definitely did you had a i mean that was your epitome that moment and the fact that it occurred at nippert stadium you know so many teams will win championships conference championships alabama and michigan who made the playoff won conference championships on neutral fields. Cincinnati won theirs on their home field. And to be able to celebrate with home fans, it's a moment that, you know, I know going to the Big 12 is going to be much better than the American, but they don't have home field advantage for the Big 12 championship game. They did for the championship game last season. And to be able to enjoy the crowd and be a part of something special, it's a moment I'll never forget. Even for what my role was that day, I still got to experience it. And, during commercial breaks, I would, you know, take my headphones off that come that came with my camera and hear the crowd, and just to hear them chant CFP with all the with their phones lit up. I mean, I could write probably a 
five page personal narrative. Shout out to Allison Diller, my sixth grade English teacher who taught me that I could probably write a five page personal narrative about what that moment felt like. But the number one moment is Pike to Bins. And why isn't it? I mean, it's on a bobblehead. You've got two great announcers who are two good friends, two, you know, two people who I've met, of course, Dan Horde, you know, my mentor, Sean McDonough, who's one of my favorite announcers I've ever met, as nice of a person off the mic as he is on the mic. And by the way, his voice is the same in person as it is on air, if you can believe that. So anyway, that's a game you remember where you were. And I kind of left you on a cliffhanger in segment two. I remember exactly where I was that game. I was in my living room. I had a friend of mine coming over for the SEC championship because that was one versus two. I'm like, all right, dude, just come on over. We'll watch football. And I remember my mom and I were watching. My mom, who's a fellow Bearcat, she and I were watching that game. And this was, I think we had our big screen TV that then. So we're watching the game. And it was a stressful game. In fact, I think I remember that morning. Was that morning? So that morning, I, I had just gotten back from a uh, a bat mitzvah, and I the score was thirty one ten. I'm like, oh my god, what's going on? We can't lose this game. So then we come back, we're down six. My mom and I were like on the edge of our first off, we're standing, and we're just like balls of anxiety. And then Pike just lops this to the end zone to Benz. She, he catches it. We're screaming. My friend knocked on the door. I'm pretty sure he walked in as the touchdown was happening. I mean, it was just the wildest minute in my house. We were screaming. That's how powerful and exciting that moment was. An iconic moment for the program. It's on a bobblehead. I, I think Dan Horde would call it the best moment that he's ever been a part of as a broadcaster in the history in in his career. Uh, he certainly told me that it's near the top of the list. I mean, he he told me that he treated that game as he treats every other game. But I, I would think that that moment has to be high on his list of moments that he's been as a Bearcats broadcaster. And for me, it that felt like the top. And there's a book written by my good friend Bill Cook, former GoBearcats.com beat writer and former Cincinnati Inquirer Cincinnati Post writer as well. This is what the top feels like. For a day and for a few hours, it felt like we were on the top of the college football world with Alabama and Florida and Texas. And it felt like we were going to play for a national championship. And even though they didn't, it's still a moment we don't forget. And as Luke Fickle has brought the Bearcats back to you know relevancy and then prominence and then national prominence, you can appreciate that moment more than you've ever been able to. Because when Brian Kelly left, you probably didn't appreciate it. But I did. And it's certainly, now that the Bearcats are where they are, that's a moment you're never going to forget. And I think the fact that it came in Pittsburgh, it means a lot more. Because we all know Heinz Field can be a house of horror sometimes, or was. Wasn't that day. And there were a lot of Bearcats fans there to see it. And I was fortunate enough with my mom, who's a fellow Bearcats fan, to, to watch that with her. That was an incredible sports moment. All right, that's going to do it today here on Locked On Bearcats. Don't forget tomorrow, Bold Prediction Tuesday, the quarterbacks. That's going to be a fun one. Uh, don't forget, if you're watching on the Locked On Bearcats YouTube channel, to subscribe. We are one subscriber away from 100, so could it be you that gets us to the century mark? Could be. And don't forget when you're on YouTube to like and share a comment on our video. If you're downloading from an audio platform, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast, don't forget to subscribe and like, or I'm sorry, share a comment and or give it a rating. All of that helps more Bearcats fans like you find this podcast. As for me, you can follow me on Twitter at Frankie underscore Natty with two N's, N-N-A-T-I. You can follow me on Instagram, AlexFrank9 underscore, or email me at alex 3 frank at gmail.com, all lowercase, Alex, the number three, Frank at gmail.com. Thanks for making Lockdown Bearcats your first listen every day. Now go get all of your daily Big 12 news in less than 30 minutes with Big 12 expert Josh Neighbors. It's free and available everywhere you get your podcasts. Back tomorrow on Lockdown Bearcats. Until then, have a great rest of your Monday. 
I'm Alex Frank for the Lockdown Bearcats podcast, and I will talk to you tomorrow on Bold Prediction Tuesday, the quarterback's edition.